In my life, I've your way. I wanna feel your thoughts, Baba. Take your place. I wanna feel your touch, Baba. Have your way. Yeah.
Thank you, Lord, because even as we are going out on daily basis, we are not knocked down by hit and run vehicles. May all glory and honor be unto you, alone in the name of Jesus. Jesus' mighty name, I pray.
take to meet you over the head. That's why it's serious and it's spiritual case to be able to ask, if this is the original plan of God, why are we suffering? If God decided on his own to say to others who are with him, let us create man, let's make man in our giving, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the health, and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the head. Thank you. 
For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Now, if you are somebody who has been studying the Bible, you will know that when God gave the law, the commandment to Moses, Jesus. 
He said, see the Lamb of God that came to take away the sins of the whole world. And I like John. He said to go. I didn't know him. It was God, the person that sent me, that told me that whosoever the spirit comes upon, that is the Son of God. So you can't know Jesus if the Lord Himself did not open your eyes. So that is why the Pharisees keep all the disciples. Okay, now when they kill all the disciples. Something now that is affecting us to be happy. And I thank God that God has raised me up to open the eyes of the world to what happened. Which we, we, we they didn't know. And I'm glad I'm sharing the message all over the world. You know, at the time Jesus came, Roman Empire was the one that took over the whole world at that time. That's the time of Augustus Caesar. Was the child of Roman Empire. And he sent governors to his prayer. People like Pilate. Error. Put the, the positions of power, political power. So when they saw that Jesus had died, and the disciples were preaching, and they see that these people are, these, these Pharisees and these men, they have killed them. That's how this Roman, this. Roman Empire, Augustus Caesar. That's how he sat down. He said, okay, well, this is great. They love religion. This is their area. So we call all the governors. Because Roman Empire was in charge of the whole world at that time. They have conquered the whole world. Before the Greek, uh, sorry, uh, Medo Persia and uh, Babylon, they were in charge. But at this time, because they were conquering, it's not this democracy we are having now, where you have to food. That time is war. You can kill, you can destroy, you take over. And they were in war. They took over the whole world. If you want me to be in charge of church, 
I still have to enjoy my governor power. Vatican City for him. He did that in, in, in Rome, in this in, in Italy. Vatican City. He said, okay, that city will be like a country, will be here.
many. I'm talking about many. Somebody who has contact with Jesus. And she's a lady. Beautiful lady. Because she was with Christ and life changed. She used to have seven evil spirits. Evil spirits, seven, and you succeed in life. Wow. Succeed. You've been laboring, you've been working, you've been, you even look beautiful, you can speak down, you have qualification. Seven, seven evil spirits that crush your life. That's why you need Jesus. Look, many of you, like me, if not Jesus, I don't know how I will have met others. Nobody. I never knew I can, I can, I can be a little But I was carrying low that It was great. You know, any of you, if you are not making it right, this evil spirit. But if you give your life to Jesus, number one thing you will do, those evil spirits will punish them. Now, look at John chapter 20, verse 11. But when you stood without at the support of weeping, and as she wept, she stood down and looked into the simple car. He came looking for Christ. Because he is funny. How can I live without Jesus? You know, if you meet through Christ, there's no way. You will win if you don't see. If you don't see. Because many of you are not born again, truly. That's why you are not enjoying Jesus. That's why I hear some of you are committing adultery. If you have made Jesus, you will be afraid. I hear some of you are painting your face. You are made like a liar. What's that? Are you here? Some of you are you even drinking beer. You know what? Oh, so 
in the school coming. Ah, I asked myself, do these people know Jesus? If you want to enjoy Christ, he has everything for us. Oh. The number one thing that you enjoy in Christ is the moment you come to him, you will automatically you have, you will have dominion. Look at Matthew, what he said in Matthew chapter 6. That's the way you come to this church. You will hear the truth that will give you dominion. This is our own church. I'm not talking of others so where they are telling you bring money, bring water, bring. No, you don't preach there. You don't preach the word. I teach him anything. So, here what Jesus said here. Yeah. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 to 34. But seek ye fed the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. Verse 34 unto you. Take therefore no thought, for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of his self. Sufficient unto the day is the evil we are all. See, number one, first, the kingdom of God. And that's the gospel. We'll be telling you, repent of your sin. Accept Christ as your God. That's the first step. And then when you are coming regularly, We'll be teaching you more. We'll be correcting your life. And as you are correcting your life, you'll we'll be entering into that dominion more and more. You know what I found out in this our church? It's like matter of food or clothing. It's not a problem. If you are a true member of this church and you are seeking righteousness, first of all, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, you don't have a problem of food and Because, look at verse 34. Take therefore no thoughts for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thoughts for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil. Just pray. Attend all the meetings we are, we are having here. Follow all the counsel we are giving you. We ask you, pray, have night meeting every Friday in your house. These are the things you need to get your problem solved. We ask you to come here on Wednesday if you have time. Come, let's pray together. Just two times in the morning. Okay, we're not. Jesus is not demanding too much from you now. And when you come to church on Sunday, it's what you have to give. Nobody is saying it's a must. We don't have a tight card here or book where we are writing, whether you contribute or you. Because God is not cheerful giver. That's why we are seeing miracles here. You know, last Wednesday, I was surprised. We were not so many. Not that. It's not that we are many, but it's not that this place was filled. Few of them like that. I will not see any testimony of one, testimony of one, testimony. That's how it should be in the house of God. God knows how to solve your problem. As you are serving Him, because you are seeking His righteousness, 
There is one thing that I will show you which many of you are not used to. Hebrews chapter 12. This one, many of you are not used to it. Hebrews chapter 12. Verses 6 to 7. Hebrews chapter 12. Verses 6 to 7. For whom the Lord loved he chastened it and scorned it every son. He receive it. If you enjoy chastening, God dealing with you. As we saw, for what son is he whom the father chastened not? Some of you are not used to it. Because where you are coming from, they need your money. You can correct you. I was explaining to work uh, workers here yesterday. Something happened here on one Tuesday. And it has never happened to me before. In, in, in this church, the way I was angry. Because I don't see all my effort. I don't see like your face. People are not seeking righteousness. And I saw the way I reacted. Now, I was in one church before. And in that church, I did everything in my life there. Until one day, I was preaching like this. And I'm used to, when I'm preaching, I will, you know, hit the altar like that. But for this day we're talking about, some of you who are here were there. So, something happened that I was angry. It's because of the sin the pastor of that church of adultery was committing adultery with women in that church. And he was still proud of it. So on that day, the younger king and I hit the altar. That's how the altar broke. That was my last day in that church. So when I got home, I prayed to God. I thought that I would leave that church, but not like the way I left it. Why? God told me that what you did, I led you to do it. Because that man was not ready to repent. That church. Yeah, true, true. That was the end of that church. Yeah, true, true. That so, when this happened now, I have to go to God in prayer. Why, God? I shouldn't do that.
revelation God is giving us. We will be there, we will hear. Give your life to Christ, you will see the 